Blue Troopers, Max and Max's models here. I certainly hope you're all doing well this morning. So I have been debating on something. It looks like Ken will be able to make the 3D printed top dome for the C57D for me. I found a STL file. Now he'll have to resize it, but that shouldn't be a big deal. And this brings up the debate about 3D printing versus vacuum forming when you need to make something. And both have their respective pros and cons. Obviously with 3D printing, all you need is the STL file. And if you can't find one, you can learn to program and learn to design it yourself. And then you can pretty much print the part, clean it up, and off you go. Vacuum forming, of course, you have to have the plug so that you have the mold to make it on. You have to build a vacuum form machine. But that actually isn't that hard or that expensive. You can find lots of DIY videos on YouTube on how to build it, and you can build it the size you need. I've been using the little Mattel home kit vacuum form to make canopies for airplanes and face shields for astronauts, little things like that, but it has a small plantain. For something as big as that dome, I'd have to build a pretty big one, although that could be a handy thing to have. Now, I know we have some glue troopers who are excellent vacuum formers as well as uh, resin uh, car makers and things like that. But as 3D printing becomes more common, I think that might start taking over for a lot of this. Each one of them, of course, as I mentioned, has its respective advantages. And, you know, the super home builder model shop should have everything. <laughs> a vacuum form and a 3D printer and a resin ability. But, of course, that's not practical for everybody. So, in the case of something like the dome on the C57D, part of me really prefers the idea of vacuum forming because I can go over the exact part I have and make a nice copy and crank out a bunch of them. That would be really good for the lower engine section where you use the thin vacuum form plastic, paint it to, with a, a light aluminum, and then you could put your lighting system inside so that when the lights are off, it would look like the parked vehicle, but turn the lights on, they should peer through the vacuum form painted plastic and still give a good effect, although it would not be as bright as what's in the movie. The other option would be to use the vacuum form to make a copy of the bottom piece. Of course, since the plastic is stretched over that piece, you could put it on the stand so that when you put the model on the stand, it would go in the silver part and there you have it uh, all looking like the part ship but when you lift it out you'd have the clear glass available to have the bright uh, engine lights and everything a couple of different ways to go about it the problem is there's no way to resize it you're just making a copy of what you have with 3d printing i can resize it because apparently the diameter is about an inch too small on the one that comes in the kit and it's not shaped quite right so Again, each one has its advantages. Obviously, with a vacuum form machine, you don't have to learn to program a computer or find the files or run a potentially expensive and cantankerous 3D printer. But, of course, with vacuum form, you can't really resize anything. So, you're limited to what you have a mold of. So, I think the two complement each other. There's the occasional case like this where you might go, okay, both of them can do it. Which one is better? But, I... I'm really seriously considering that 3D printer, but I'm also considering making a vac machine. So that would make me a fully operational Tarvis. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, just what was on my mind this morning. Uh, one more reminder, today's the last day to get in the pictures for the uh, D-Day group build. Okay, guys. Well, that's what I have for this morning. We'll talk to you later. And as always, model on.